I think the original engine that was in it that Mr. Jim put in, from what I understand, was a gas engine that he never could get to work just right. It may have been a, a, a one-lung Palmer engine or something like that. Um, the story that I heard from Denny Berg, who would have been the fourth owner, um, was that Mr. Jim took the motor out of the boat and put it at the end of his lane over in uh, LeCompte Creek uh, so he could watch people steal bits and pieces from that old engine. I don't, I'm not sure what they used it for, but um, it then had a gray marine engine in it from what I understand. Uh, Denny Berg put in a very small Westerbeek um, and the Westerbeek was a precursor to one very common that many people have in boats these days, but it only developed about 30 horsepower, um, so it wasn't really enough to overcome all the windage of a two-masted vessel. Um, in fact, the first year that we had the boat in 2007, we were trying to go up the river to where we keep the boat now, and um, the wind coming down the Magathy River was too strong for that 30 horsepower engine to overcome. So we ended up uh, wind vaning up the river. In other words, we backed up the river um, because uh, there was just too much windage forward for us to keep momentum uh, to keep the boat pointed into the wind. So now I have a, a Cummins. Um, 3.9 liter engine, a four-cylinder, naturally aspirated engine. Um, it's a rebuilt uh, American-made engine from, I think it's in Cummins, Indiana, um, which is a very interesting story. Um, I'd been interested in putting a, a stronger uh, engine in it. Um, I sort of like the idea of getting an American-built, um, but they're not too many, and certainly a diesel. Um, a Westerbeek would have been fine, but it's a little more modern. It's not quite the same aesthetic for the boat. So it was, not, it was a bit of a challenge to find a smaller diesel engine that would actually um, fit in the space. Uh, I mean, it has a nice engine space down below, as some of the pictures show. Um, but uh, the horsepower for many diesel engine bottoms out in the you know 150 horsepower range. And the boat just doesn't need that much horsepower to keep it going. So what I've got now is about 76 horsepower at uh, 2,400 RPM, although we don't really run it that fast. Oh, we can easily go five knots. I think we tried a wide open throttle test the other day because the, uh, the propeller, which I had to re replace, was a used propeller that I found down at the museum where I was rebuilding it. Um, needed to be uh, repitched and dressed down and it had been used for uh, two other boats. It had been reworked uh, substantially twice before I got it. Um, and we may need to replace that propeller because it's showing its age, it's uh, de-zincifying and so forth. So uh, we did a wide open throttle test and with the setup that we have right now, we top out at about 2,000 RPM at about 7.7 .7 knots. So the boat will move along pretty smartly, um, and I think we had a little bit of centerboard down, so it would probably even have gone a little bit faster. Um, the fastest we've been was a couple of years ago when we went down to St. Michael's after one of those heavy spring deluges, and I think we were moving about nine and a half knots. I feel that the skipjacks came after the three-sail bateau uh, is the skipjack, which has one large single sail. It's basically a sloop. Uh, on the eastern shore, some men call that a two-sail bateau, the two sails of a skipjack being the main sail and the jib forward. The three-sail bateau, which I believe evolved from the Indian log canoes, the dugout canoes, which got progressively larger, um, have two masts uh, and have three sails, therefore they have the aftermast is called the main mast, the second mast going forward is called the foremast and it has a foresail on it, and then the jib all the way up forward. Um, that's typical schooner terminology. Uh, most modern people would not refer to those sails in that form. They call it a mizzen and a, and a mainsail. 
Uh, the masts on the Jolly Dolphin are uh, around 48 feet above the waterline and 50 feet above the waterline. So the stresses on the skipjack are larger because we have such a large area that has to resolve itself into the hull, borne on a 60 foot high mast of a skipjack. Uh, the stresses on the shorter boat are less, um, so there may have been some evolution of the uh, mechanics, the engineering of the boat as time progressed for the skipjacks to be able to follow from the log canoes and of course the three sail bateau.